I brought one with OxyDry. And, uh, <laughs> Ooh, let's see something else here. This is actually a student housing. Apparently, they've been uh, renting out this. Uh, well, it's actually a nice condo, but they've been renting it out to students. And, well, we all know what that means. <laughs> actually, I went to move this chair and the leg just disintegrated. It's, just, it's not, it's obviously split. And nobody, someone just put it in place and had it sitting there, so nobody would know. <laughs> anyway, it's not a very big place, but, uh, oh, it's grubby. And we don't know how old the carpet is. It could be 10 years old. I doubt that, though. I bet this is five years or less. This is, um, uh, well, it could be a tether polyester or a trinexta. I don't know. But it's really... It's pretty grim, grim looking right here, isn't it? So we're going to vacuum, obviously, and thoroughly. I'm going to be, uh, I'm not trying to get this done quickly because, uh, <laughs> well, I can't because I've got to do a really thorough job as much as I can. This is actually for a, uh, a property management company. They're managing this and uh, somebody had referred us to them. And I think this is the first time I've cleaning, I've been cleaning, I'll be cleaning for them, so... You know, it's quite a contrast between uh, over here where I uh, obviously no one's walked. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? And over here where obviously they have been walking. And uh, it's, it's grubby. Oh man, it's grubby. It is worn too. So I can't unwear this carpet. It is uh, showing a lot of wear. I won't be moving the couch, I'll just go up to it. I factored that in when I was measuring. There's quite a few, uh, quite a few little marks on this carpet too. course that step from the outside onto the carpet here always gets uh, really grubby because crap gets uh, onto the uh, deck and then you step out there get on your shoes and then you step on the carpet and it transfers off of course I did tell the uh, the property management fellow that I'm in here that I would be moving this bed because although I no, don't normally move beds, this one is uh, actually really light. 
and it'll be easy to move it. So um, I volunteered to do that. I'm going to move it a bit for a sec. Oh, there's the oxy drive in. You know, one of the nice things about having a vehicle that has nice signage on it uh, is, of course, wherever I go, I'm actually advertising. I know often, over the years, I've often had calls from people from the, uh, literally from the van, they say they saw the van or whatever. We even had people call me uh, even in the vehicle behind me. Back when I used to answer my own phone all the time, that was a fairly often, a fairly uh, common thing that would happen be driving along and someone would phone and say, yeah, I'm in the vehicle behind you. So it definitely is a good thing to do. Have a, a nice time. And you certainly don't have to have a wrap. I actually don't like wraps myself. I mean, whatever you want to do is, you know, whatever, but I don't think it's a, whoops. I think that's an unneeded expense myself. But. Huh. Okay. Notice the edges are very uh, uh, choked up with dust. There is a vacuum here. Ooh, that's a thistle in it. <clears throat> but students, uh, <laughs> in my experience, they, they often don't even bother vacuuming. Or, well, you know, it gets done once in a blue moon, but. They've got other things on their minds, I guess.
you know, it's amazing to think that if I was a steam cleaner, or a typical steam cleaner, uh, I wouldn't b be bothering to do what I'm doing right now. I wouldn't be pre vacuuming this carpet. Because that's standard operating procedure for most guys that uh, do steam cleaning. They just spray the carpet and then they start cleaning the carpet. And, uh, you know, it's, you think about it, I mean, there's a, so this, this visible crap that's here. Of course, there's more stuff in the carpet that's getting pulled up with the vacuum as I'm going over it. And all of that junk in the carpet and particulates and, and oils and soils that the vacuum might have picked up as soon as you start cleaning it without pre-vacuuming it, without removing it all of that is there in the carpet interfering with your ability to clean you know, and there's guys that do a uh, low moisture process who don't bother vacuuming or, or you know, the other thing they often do is uh, well, some guys do anyway, is they'll, uh, they'll ask the customer to do the pre-vacuuming. And you cannot assume that your customer is going to take the time to do a really thorough, proper vacuuming and, and then rely upon that vacuuming to... Uh, be part of the uh, getting the results that you as the professional carpet cleaner are trying to, to get. You, you simply can't do that. For all you know that their vacuum might be making all kinds of noise and everything, but it could be completely full and clogged up and they don't know. And they're, they're just careless or inattentive or, or don't care. Or the vacuum might not be working well or they just aren't very thorough in the way they use it. And you're going to rely upon that and then call yourself a uh, professional carpet cleaner? I think that's, well, it's certainly not the proper way to go about it, but that's what a lot of people will do, apparently. And you know, some would say, well, yeah, but it takes more time and I, I need to charge more. Well, yes, you do need to charge for what you're doing. But, you know, the kind of clientele that I typically do aren't looking for the cheapest possible price. But if that's the kind of market that you're after, then I guess maybe it doesn't matter so much. Because if they just want it done as cheaply as possible, then then you do a substandard work. I think I better do the edge while I'm in here. <laughs> well, I'm in this corner, that is. There's quite a few spots, actually. You've probably seen them as I've acted in here.
this box on this carpet. A tremendous amount of dust that's getting picked up here. That part's done. Didn't do it here. Dead as that is.
Okay. There. Okay, so that's the uh, pre-vacuuming step. Unnecessary thing, of course. It took me, what, 21 minutes? Wasn't too long, really, was it? How? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my pre-treatment, and I'm going to show you kind of how I do it. At least how I do it in this case, because every case is a little bit different. We've got something going on there, in that corner, and that corner. And you see lots of little spots. Now this carpet is going to be cleaned with a uh, boosted uh, mix, which I'll show you in a minute. But I do want to make sure I hit the most obvious spots for sure with the uh, suspend, which is what's in this trigger direct sprayer. that a good application right in here because uh, a lot of this will be oils um, contaminants that have been settling on there I'm going to spray the whole rest of it in a minute as you'll see but I'm going to focus right now on the oh, just on the spots that I see Now, for those of you who are watching and aren't sure what I'm actually using, this is an esteem product called Suspend. It is a pre-spray. So what that means is it is an emulsifier, pardon me, it's a surfactant, which means it lowers the surface tension. So it gives your emulsifier, which is your primary cleaner, uh, more penetrating power. I actually do have uh, stabilized ClO2 in here as well and it's mixed at 3,000 parts per million in the pre-spray and anytime there's any organic type stains the um, stabilized ClO2 in here will typically cause that to fade away before I even actually get to the cleaning not in every case but Okay, I'm just, yeah. Now I'm gonna have to <laughs> lift my machine up and over this bed when I get here. Oh, there's a little nasty, put a big sting right here. Obviously somebody was maybe had a drink or something. I think I got all the most obvious ones. Now we kind of shift the focus and give it a more general spray. I could do this while I was doing the other, but I wanted to just make sure I. I want to do it that way anyway. Now I'll be using my hull chair fiber pad. Now normally what I do is I'm, I would almost always use the same side every time because is it 
is used a few times. It sort of uh, tones it down a little bit, I guess you could say, makes it less aggressive. And then in those situations where I want to get into a place like this, a hair map up in a condo, I want to have maximum aggression on this particular carpet. So I'm going to flip the pad and I'm going to uh, use the side that I've never used yet. And so that'll give me maximum uh, scrubbing action for this particular carpet. So that's what's going on in my mind. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay, now we're gonna. Oh, I think there was a bit of a spot there. Oh, yeah, I got that one, I think. Okay, now over here again, we're just giving a general overall spray just to get it a little bit damp. So this is gonna be lowering the surface tension. And the pH of this stuff, I believe, is uh, I think it's 10.1 actually. So it's really not that high. It's not about the pH. It's more about the uh, the actual surfactant that's in here. That uh, and it it just seems to work really well. This was actually recommended to me by uh, Craig Jasper, who's uh, been uh, in the carpet cleaning field for well decades. He's probably ooh. How old is he? Craig must be? Is he in his 80s now? I guess it, maybe he is. I don't know. Definitely 70s. He's older than me, and I'm in my 60s. So, um, And he does uh, ICRC courses. Um, he's well-respected. Been around for many years. And and he actually owns the uh, and runs the Just Gone program using stabilized ClO2 and also unstabilized ClO2, the, the uh, fogging and the... Um, Oh, what do they call the other type of thing? The the um, gassing, gassing, and he sells other products. So, uh, but he really knows his stuff. And uh, I was asking him one day, you know, what would you recommend as a as a pre-treatment when when doing this type of cleaning? And he said, hey, try this. And uh, I've been very impressed with it. It's actually my main product that I use as my uh, main spotter. It seems to work really well. And it's very inexpensive. Uh, this, this actually, there's actually one ounce of the uh, Steam product in the trigger spare and then topped up. I actually mix up a gallon at a time, but it's four ounces per gallon. So, all right. Now we're ready to, are we ready to rock and roll here? I think we are. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this as a separate video, so I'll let you go, and I'll be right back.